now it's time for our next session. The title is Buy.GSA Tools and Templates. Discover samples, tools, and tips to help you get started on your next purchase. This session will provide an introduction to buy.gsa.gov and how to easily access resources in the document library. Our wonderful presenter for this session is Craig Chavez. Craig, thank you for joining us and feel free to go ahead and jump in. Sure, hi everyone. I'll be your presenter for this session. So I'm Craig Chavez in a former life. I was a contract specialist, so I do um, come to this presentation with that knowledge in mind, you know, I used to do IT, I did a ton of different procurements, uh, professional services. I wish I had some of these tools that I'm gonna show you now. Um, and we're going through buy.gsa.gov. Now, just so you know, buy.gsa.gov is in beta mode. So this is gonna be a sneak peek. We're only got 15 minutes, so we're not gonna be able to go through a deep dive of the site. I'm only gonna show you a couple tools. I'll have maybe a couple minutes at the end just for some Q and A. And let's go ahead and get started. And let me tell you why buy.gsa.gov exists. So let's go to the first slide. So if you're a GSA customer, if you're one of our customer agencies, you can access a ton of different GSA websites, market research tools, different portals to do your business. And there are a ton of them there. I think there are just, let me go through the list. You've got Advantage, eBuy, eLibrary, Calc, Interact, Discovery, um, 8A Stars Plus tool, tons of different tools. Now, over the past 10 to 15 years, GSA set up these tools and they were all set up independently. So you as a customer may be using one, two, three, four, or five of them, and they all have different logins. It makes for a very cluttered experience on your guys' end. It's very difficult to use some of our stuff because you're going to multiple websites. Now let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Now on our end, it is equally as complicated because all of those different systems, all of those different market research tools, websites that you're going to, none of them talk to each other. So on the front end, you guys have different logins and all this different stuff. On the back end for GSA and how we manage all this stuff, none of these systems talk to each other. There's a lack of interoperability. Their data doesn't share between systems. We have to manage them all separately with separate teams. It's a lot of spaghetti on the back end. Just like I said, the cluttered digital experience on the front end for you guys and a cluttered digital experience on GSA side to go ahead and manage and administer all this stuff so you guys can do the market research you need, all the different platforms, access everything. It's a lot of stuff to go through. So that is why we have buy.gsa.gov. And let's go to the next slide. This is about building a better digital experience for you all on the customer agency side, and then for us, a GSA internally. That the internal stuff doesn't really matter as much to you all, because really for you, what this means, what buy.gsa.gov means for you is that you're gonna go to one place, buy.gsa.gov when the site is ready, and this is going to allow you to just go to one different one location to access a number of different tools. The, some of the stuff that I talked about, you can see in the graphic above, 8A Stars 2, Calc, um, Auctions, all of that stuff is going to be consolidated so you can access it through buy.gsa.gov. So it's going to have one access point, and like, like I said, one login. It's going to make it a lot easier. You have uh, intuitive search features. There's going to be lots of different uh, filters for you to go through and do all of your different um, activities, tools and templates for your contract file. Remember, it's all about acquisition with GSA. So if you're gonna do your contract specialist, contracting officer, program analyst, doing your acquisitions, you would use buy.gsa.gov to do market research, lots of different things. So with that in mind, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna show you what the site looks like. Again, sneak peek. It's a bait. It's right now the the website's in beta uh, version, so it's not ready for prime time just yet. But it is ready for us to show customers. Like I said, as a sneak peek, hang in there. This will be available. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Yeah, just bear with me one second. Okay, give me one minute to clear all this out. 
Clear this. Let's clear this. Okay. Kelly, can you all see my screen? Everything looks good? Yes, we can. Looks good. Okay. So up at the top, you can see the landing page for buy.gsa.gov. This is where you go. This is the landing spot for the website for buy.gsa.gov. Now it's all organized based on the resources, the tools, the stuff you'll need to do your market research, the stuff you'll need to do your transactions. But like I said, it's in beta mode, but I'm going to show you a couple different tools right now. And the first one that I'm going to show you will be this one right here where I'm mousing over. It's research GSA contracts and vendors. So this tool, this will really help you determine your market research strategy. I mean, I'm sorry, not your market research strategy, your acquisition strategy. And you see right here, it even says the site's under beta, under development. So this tool is going to help you do your market research, determine your acquisition strategy. What GSA vehicle are you going to use to do your procurement? So let's go ahead. I'll just mouse through and show you the tool real quick. So this is what it looks like. Um, you can search by a couple different features. You can do NAIX, SIN, so special item number, vendor, and contract number. And this is for GSA contracts. That's what it, all it's there for, not for any other type of um, contract vehicle. This one's strictly for GSA. So let me just give you a quick tour of what it looks like. Now, let's say you needed to do, I don't know, maybe some computer systems, something IT related. You can just type in, and you don't even have to know your NAICS code. You can start to just type in different search terms. So I'm going to do computer system. And it has the predictive search, and it also has a NAIX code preloaded in here. But if you know your NAIX code, if you know your SIN, you can search by that too. Okay. And this is going to give you some results. These are all different contracts, contractors that are part in showing up for this uh, search that we're doing for computer systems. So there's about 9,000 contracts to go through. I'm not going to go through all the different features, but you can filter out by small business concern, categories for category management, socioeconomic. You need that sort of information. And then also contract vehicles too. I'll just click on one of these just to show you what it looks like. So you click on it, it's got the vendor details and their different contract vehicles that they've got with GSA. So all of this is gonna be valuable in doing your market research to figure out your acquisition strategy, your acquisition planning, all of those sort of things. It gives you relevant information that you need such as socioeconomic status, I'll mouse through. I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you one more tool. Then we've got like maybe like a minute or two for questions. But again, this is just meant to be a sneak peek. So I'm going to show you another tool. Let me go back to the landing page. And let's go over and look at some pricing. So specifically, we're going to look at Calc Plus. So we're landing on pricing. There are a number of different pricing tools that are going to be available. The IGCE tool price estimating tool. But right now, we only, like I said, only 15 minutes. It was just a quick preview of what to come. Let's just take a look at Calc. So it gives you a couple different options. You can look at data from the multiple award schedules and get the labor, the uh, ceiling rates, or you can look at prices paid. But we're just going to do a quick, um, quick preview on just data from the um, schedules program. Again, let's keep in that keeping that uh, theme of IT, let's say we need a computer programmer. We would use this to get an idea of what it's gonna cost because it's not only figuring out your requirements, what am I gonna buy IT? And then how much is this project, how much is this acquisition gonna cost? And that's where the calc tool can come in and help you out because if there's a labor component to your contract, your acquisition, you're gonna need to price that out accordingly. So this lets you search through the multiple award schedules program and look at the uh, ceiling rates from the multiple award schedules to get an idea. So you just go ahead and type in your labor category. I just typed in computer programmer. You can do also do vendor name or contract number too. And then you just mouse down and it actually gives you pricing. So you got a different average on pricing. You've got a ton of different filters that you can use. But that you, you get an idea. And then you've got 67 different results on computer programmer and pricing information on that computer programmer. So you can mouse through 
all of this information. Again, this will make doing your market research a lot easier, especially when you go out to develop your IGCE and those sort of things. Okay. I just want to make a quick mention for two other tools real quick, and then we can turn it over to Q&A. Like I said, quick session. So the other two tools I want to show point you to would be Interact. So this is where you can connect. You would go into buy.gsa.gov. You would sign in, and you can connect to these different communities that are talking about the different GSA vehicles, different uh, vehicles that we have, different con uh, contracts that we have different topics that we have, and you can connect with others in the federal acquisition community, ask questions. That's what that's what um, Interact is for. So there's a number of different things in here, number of different contract vehicles, GSA offerings that you can go in and have discussions with, with other members in the acquisition community. And then lastly, let's go back out. Give it a sec to load. Bear in mind, it's, hang on there, it's it's in beta mode still. It's going a little slow. The other area I'd like to direct your attention to is the document library. Now this, I'm going to click on it, we'll have it load. This is going to be a place for you to find sample acquisition documents, whether it's statement of work, uh, J&A, so justification and approval, tons of different types of acquisition documents that you're going to need for every acquisition that you create, your, your procurement package, acquisition, a contract file, all of those different documents that go into that, there is going to be a place for you to go to, and it's going to be in this section of the website, find samples, templates, and tips. There's going to be a ton of different acquisition documents in here. Like I said, everything from statement of work to justification and approval, all the different sort of things that you can think of as far as anything you would need in putting together an acquisition and your procurement package, there will be sample documents in here. Okay, so we've got about two minutes left. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing, and then we can go for Q&A. Excellent. Thank you, Craig. Great sure. presentation. All right. Lots of good information there. Very excited to have that tool, you know, go live soon, be able to get, you know, really go in there and explore. Let's see if we have a few questions. Um, Robin, it looks like you were pulling out the Question, are CALP tool prices fully burdened? I think they should be. I think they're fully burdened. They are. Yeah. Yep. Um, yes, they are. And we have a question from Susan asking, can you use these market research CALP type tools for products? So for CALC, CALC is meant for labor rate data. That's that's what Calc is made for. If you're looking for specific product information, you would go into the pricing section of the website and look at prices, the prices paid portal. That has information about specific physical products. Uh, Calc is really for services. All right, thank you. We have a question from Tanika asking, how often are the labor rates updated? Within Calc, it should be monthly. If I remember right. 